Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how you can create these hotbar here where you can move items in and even move from the hotbar to a storage. So let's go. First of all we open up our instance here and add an variable called hotbar. Hotbar is an item structure as an array. Compile and save this and just for example let's add up six items here. Compile and save this. Let's go to our inventory here and open up our inventory widget. Go to the graph here and we need to change some variables here. So we can delete the select array storage as well as the drop array storage. And we need to add up a new variable called move case. Move case is an integer. Compile and save this. Let's open up our item slot widget here. Go to the graph and add up this variable as well. So move case as an integer, compile and save this and we can delete the storage right here. As you see, we have to change the use item function so we can remove the branch, take out the move case here, say switch on integer. We add up three pins here and the two goes into the cost. Compile and save this. Let's open up the on drag detected. We can remove the set select array storage here, go from the widget and want to set the move case integer. Connect it and of course we take out our move case from here and connect it. Then we open up the on drop. We can remove the drop array storage as well and now we have to set the move case integer, but this is different. So we take out the move case, get it here, go from the widget, say get move case as well. We have one switch on integer at the begin. We add up three pins. We take this out and we need this three times. So on zero, on one, and on two. We connect the move case from our current widget here like that. And now we want to set the move case from the widget. So we go from the widget, set the move case and we want to set it in every situation. So we have to copy this nine times here. So I skip the process. So as you can see, we have the first switch on with three situations and this goes into another three situations. So we have nine move cases right here and I'll try to explain what I do here. So let's open up this diagram so I can explain what I want to do. So we have the situation that you want to move an item inside the inventory or inside the storage or inside the hotbar. So this is case 0, 1 and 2. Then you have the situations when you want to move something from the inventory to the storage or from the storage to the hotbar or from the hotbar into the inventory. So as you can see we have 0 that's the inventory, we have 1 as a storage and 2 as a hotbar. So we go from the inventory to the inventory that's case 0 of course. We go from the inventory to the storage, that's three as you can see. We go from the inventory to the hotbar, so this is five. We go from the storage to the inventory, that's four. We go from the storage to the storage, so this is one. We go from the storage to the hotbar, this is seven. We go from the hotbar to the inventory. This is six. We go from the hotbar to the storage. That's eight. And we go from the hotbar to the hotbar. That is two. So we built up every situation when we move items from these storages. Next up we actually create our hotbar in our widget so we can close this, go to our inventory designer here and we select our inventory box. First of all be sure that's a variable and set the visibility to hidden. As well we go to our 
inventory text here. Let's call this inventory text and make this available as well and set the visibility to hidden as well. Again, we select our inventory box as well, the border and the grid. Copy and paste this. So we can rename this here to grid box if you want. Make sure that the visibility of this one is visible. And of course we have to rename the grid to hot grid. And then we can design it however you want. So we are done here. Let's go to our graph and we have our create inventory function. As you can see, we can remove the storage boolean here. Instead of this, we go to our create inventory function, go to the details. We remove our input here and create a new one. Of course, this will be move case as well as an integer. Compile and save this. We go from our create item slot widget and want to set the move case integer like this, of course, to the input. So we are done here as well. So let's open up our set arrays function. We have to change something right here as well. So we can remove all branches. We go from our instance here, get the hotbar array that we created as well as our hot grid down here. And of course we need the move case integer, a switch on integer function like this one. And as I said, we have nine situations like that. So let's unplug everything here and we can remove everything except this one. So the first situations are when we want to move something in the storage. So let's go from the inventory first. This will be the select array and drop array. And of course we want to update it, the normal grid. The second one is of course, when we want to move something in our storage here, like this one. And the third one is when we move something in our hotbar, like that. So this will be our basic situations. The special one when we want to move between something, of course we can copy and paste this down here, check the move between to true. And we need two update inventories because we have to update separate grids. When we take a look on our diagram again, so let's start up with the third one, this one here, as you can see, when we want to move something from the inventory to the storage. So we get our inventory as a select array, the storage as a drop array. Of course, we want to update the inventory as well as the storage. In this case, we have connect the grid as well. And now we go on with the situations with these cases here. So I skip the process. We build up every situation that we have. We are nearly done. Let's open up our third person character, go to the begin play event. We go from the instance, get our hotbar array. We get the length as well. Let's pull this out a little bit. Go from the return value of the widget, call our create inventory function, connect it. The slots is of course the length. We go again from the return value, get our hot grid. This is the grid of course. So here we create our inventory. So this is move case zero. And here we create our hotbar. This is move case two. Compile and save this. Of course we have to connect this and call our add to viewport function. Let's go down to our open inventory function. We have to change something here as well. So we can remove this part here. We go from the widget, get our inventory box as well. We get our inventory text. Then we want to set the visibility of both of these up here, of course, to hidden and down here, of course, to visible in both situations. 
The last thing is we open up our storage class because we have to fix the create inventory here as well. So we can unplug the storage and we have to set the move case, of course, to one. Compile and save this. Let's see if this works. We hit play. You can see we have our hotbar here. Let's pick up some items. We can move the items in our hotbar if you want to. We can walk to the storage here. We can move the items as well in the storage and between these two. Great. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know and yeah, goodbye.